so here we got a 2016 I believe or 15 BMW what is it the 5 series with the uh, 4 cylinder engine the turbo engine I think it's called the N20 I'm not sure 100% on that so basically customer brought it over here for me to replace the valve cover uh, she went to a different shop initially and they told her she had to replace it they caught her, quoted her a ridiculous amount of money and of course she came out here for me to do that look at that definitely needed to be replaced it's, it's definitely leaky um, but I'm not sure if it's just a valve cover that's leaky it could be also uh, all kinds of different seals around it hopefully they do come with the new cover because uh, I'm not sure this is going to be definitely my first time doing a valve cover job on this car um, just looking at it uh, from initial uh, looks like you gotta move this situation out there what else is here oh, that's about it I think I don't think it's attached to anything else at this point I think it just lifts up of course the hood is gonna be made out of some type of man there's no metal in here everything is what oh my goodness wow everything is made out of aluminum of some sort all right so there you have it the engine in all its glory definitely has a lot of whoa 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 look at that yeah that's that's insane right there that is a pool of oil sitting all around this um, this engine uh, wow could that be as a result somebody uh, no nah, I don't even think it's oil spill it's not oil spill this is definitely from the valve cover but that's a large amount of oil I've never really seen something like that um, wow okay well from the looks of it it doesn't seem to be too crazy of a job. Um, if you've been, if you've done a um, work of a job on BMW, you, you probably would realize that. It, it looks kind of like the regular situations. So, just a lot of uncovering you got to do to get down to it. But honestly, this is not as bad as I thought. Uh, I think the, uh, the E90 are a lot worse than this. I think so I think the fuel rail definitely has to you know come off of that um, and that's about that's the main thing and then this uh, what is that a high pressure pump or something maybe that's what it looks like to me I could be wrong or maybe eccentric shaft like a Valtronic type situation right here maybe it's a Valtronic I'm not sure it does kind of has the the top end of it looks like a high pressure pump, but I don't know why the high pressure pump would be. Okay, I don't know. I'm not even going to say something stupid. So, um, but that's what it looks like to me. I could be wrong. Yeah, that, that's probably what it is. It looks like a high pressure pump. It's got to be a high pressure pump right here. This would be the eccentric shaft right there, uh, which actually I was trying to get the gasket for. Couldn't find it. So, I don't think it comes with the no valve cover. So, I don't know. I think we're going to have to reuse the sand gasket. I'm probably going to use some sealer around it. But if it was to leak, I mean, this easy access is right on top. And it's two, uh, you know, torques that we need to get removed. And I think we should be able to deal with that. But, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to do it today because I'm not really feeling that well. I mean, plus it's, it's Thanksgiving. I want to go see some people. So, but I just wanted to get a quick look and see what I'm up against but from the looks of it it doesn't seem too deep at all honestly on this side just a lot of disconnecting things and psh, that's about it and whatever else doesn't come like these looks like a camshaft sensors right there one is there the other one is there so maybe I'm gonna have to transfer that onto the new one what else that's honestly uh, it doesn't look that bad it really doesn't look that bad so once I'm done, I'm taking it to the car wash. But I'm st I still cannot explain why you have this much oil here. Where's that oil coming from? Unless the seal on this side, inner side right there, this lip right here, 
is completely shot and the oil pressure is so high inside of this engine that it causes that you know I'm trying to really try to explain it away but I know I'm probably I'm not making sense how do you get that much oil in there that's kind of crazy but so remove the uh, everything and yeah yep there's a video on it I believe online um, but um, it, it looks like a straightforward process at least from what I can see mostly just a straightforward process so nothing really crazy that I see that could be a, a source of a headache anyway so we'll leave it to tomorrow I'm probably not gonna film it because I'm gonna work in the garage here so I'm not I don't have natural light and I don't have the best uh, uh, you know lighting uh, I have like two of them and if they run out then I'm stuck so if I'm gonna film it it's gonna take a long time what I may do is just, uh, if I run across something that's worth mentioning, I will. Uh, if, and then at the end, I'll give you my thoughts after the job is done. If it is something that I feel like any DIY person can just, you know, get on it and do it, then, you know, I will definitely tell you the truth about it. And if you need to uh, get somebody with a little bit more uh, experience and know-how, then also I will let you know. But like I say, from initial glance, as somebody, of course, who works on car on a daily basis, it doesn't look too uh, scary. All right, guys. Happy holiday again. What's going on, guys? So we're back here at the uh, BMW. That's a uh, 2015 or 16 528i. And we're doing a valve cover gasket. So here we go. Um, after about an hour and a half, mostly trying to figure out things. Uh, the most so far difficult part of this job was to remove um, um, the air pump. That one right there sitting right there. It's right there in the back, close to the firewall, not a lot of space there, so you really need to have the proper tool, uh, something really, really tiny and uh, ratchet, so you don't spend the whole day trying to uh, do that. So that's one. The other one was uh, some type of bracket on top of there. Uh, the bracket basically is used to route all of the wiring so that bracket was a little pain to remove uh, right there uh, the bolt you got to watch out for because it sits right here on the car like this right and the uh, cover comes into these two holes you see there you know those holes one there one there so the beauty cover at the end is going to go slide into those two holes so you need this bracket uh, but you got two bolts at the top here, which are uh, E7, and then you got the one at the back here. This is the one that's kind of pesky because really uh, you got to have the right, you know, amount of uh, extension and whatnot to get to it properly. Um, yeah, I mean, besides that, everything else is just, you know, regular BMW stuff. If you work on a E46, E90, especially E90. Uh, this would be very familiar to you pretty much everything else is just uh, removing wiring out of the way and I just take everything and just you know, basically just flip it out of my way pretty much once you disconnect the two O2 sensors uh, the connectors are different one of them is going to be a different color than the other one so you can mix them up which is what should be the case you know <laughs> no kudos to anybody there that's just common sense uh, but besides that everything else again nuts and bolts just remove things in that order and that's about it so right now I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean up everything out here and uh, get set for the new uh, valve cover uh, it's recommended to replace the entire valve cover and not just the gasket because it's made out of plastic there's a chance it can warp uh, so changing the gasket by itself may not be sufficient and also there's a chance it can crack when you go on to remount it because it's plastic so uh, it could get brittle by the time you go back and torque it. So even torquing it properly, you can crack it uh, a second time. So definitely go ahead and uh, get yourself a brand new valve cover. So I got mine from uh, Rock Auto. Uh, I'll link in the part number for that one. And uh, yeah, so let me go ahead and uh, again, go ahead and uh, clean up everything around here. I will check the timing chain and everything and the tensioners uh, just to see if anything needs to be done further. Not that I would <laughs> then do it myself, but uh, just, you know, let the customer know if I find anything else. All right, guys. Okay, guys, so 
we're finished with this job. Everything is put back together except for the uh, beauty cover uh, because I got to take it for a test run, make sure everything is fine. I started it briefly, make sure I didn't have any type of uh, uh, gas leak uh, because of the fuel rail being removed. Also looked around and see that we don't have any uh, oil leak. So, so far we're only seeing smoke coming from the uh, residue from before. But other than that, everything seems to be okay at this point. Uh, so, as I said, I'm gonna uh, take it out for a test run and uh, bring it back, do a, another check and hopefully everything is fine. And then uh, ship it. But not too bad a job. Again, uh, the most to me challenging part of the entire job was to get the, uh, uh, the, uh, the air pump which is at the back there by the firewall. That was the most challenging part of the entire job for me. Uh, once you remove that in a little bracket, uh, pretty much everything else, you know, uh, not so bad. All right, guys, hope you uh, learned something. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave it down there for me. Uh, I'd be happy to answer anything I could. Have a good weekend.